Amit Awahopa, thank you for joining us. I am Alia Chavez. We begin today in Lawrence, Kansas, where new details are emerging in the death of Lakota actor Cole Brings Plenty. Cole Brings Plenty disappeared just over a week ago after leaving the scene of an alleged domestic violence incident. According to the Lawrence Police Department, officers responded to reports of a female screaming for help on March 31st. Investigators later identified Brings Plenty as a suspect involved. His family was prompted to search for him after he was last seen driving on a Kansas highway. Late last week, authorities confirmed the 27-year-old's body was found in a wooded area. Brings Plenty is the nephew of Yellowstone actor Moses Brings Plenty and is best known for his role as Pete Plenty Clouds in the Yellowstone prequel 1923. We will, of course, bring you more information in the actor's death investigation as we learn more. In the world of finance, a huge influx of capital is flowing into native banking institutions. Last week, the EPA announced it is putting $400 million into Native Community Development Financial Institutions, or CDFIs, for green energy projects. It's part of a $20 billion EPA effort to fight climate change. The funding is being called historic for the CDFIs, which are often the only financial institutions on tribal land. It's historic. It really is. I don't know, you know, if we'll ever see another influx of capital for one particular um, issue like climate change in my lifetime. I think that this is um, historic. It really is. A Utah nonprofit is opening its phone lines for natives facing domestic and sexual violence. Restoring Ancestral Winds launched its hotline earlier this week after four years of planning and in midst of Sexual Assault Awareness Month. This statewide service is aimed at helping the indigenous community who make up a smaller population in Utah but have higher rates of murder and missing people. Victims of sexual and domestic violence can call the hotline at the following number on your screen. In Brazil, an indigenous person has earned a seat at the Brazilian Academy of Letters for the very first time. Ailton Kranek, a writer and environmentalist, wore an indigenous headband while receiving a sword, necklace, and diploma from his peers. He has said he comes to bring more indigenous languages. Academia Brasileira... The Brazilian Academy of Letters is Portuguese, and I'm bringing the indigenous languages. I think that makes a big difference in Brazil's history. The Brazilian Academy of Letters is a cultural institution that first opened in 1897. Its objective is the cultivation of the Portuguese language and literature. Krenick told the Academy he wants to create a platform to make the institution's documents and books available in indigenous languages, many of which are on the verge of disappearing. We end our headlines today in the Navajo Nation, where last week over 10,000 native-authored books were delivered for free to Navajo people. The Indian Girls Book Club delivered the books in just five days, kicking off its road trip in Window Rock, Arizona, and ending in Shiprock, New Mexico. The group is a nonprofit with a mission to inspire a love of literature and native youth and uses its resources to uplift native writers. The events held for the community included food and performances and, of course, free books. According to Navajo poet and founder Kinsale Drake on Instagram, who publicly called out publishers about low Native representation in the industry, investing in Native youth and writers is the future.